Motive, obvious motive to kill. I mean, driven by hate, driven by wanting to kill. The horrible winds of fate. It's the best explanation I have for you for how he saw those officers on the way to where he, we believe he was going. It's Attorney General Drew Wrigley describing the suspect in last week's deadly shooting and how close we came to a much bigger tragedy in Fargo. Good evening and thank you for joining us on Valley News Live at 5. I'm Justin Betty. And I'm Stacey Van Dyke. During a nearly two hour press conference today, Drew Wrigley laid out a detailed moment by moment play by play of what happened leading up to and during that deadly shooting in Fargo one week ago today and how close we came to a much bigger disaster in Fargo. Wrigley said 37 year old Mohammed Barakat's main target was likely the downtown street fair. We'll have more on that in a couple moments, but first a quick timeline of how this all unfolded. 242, there was a small fender bender on 25th Street South in Fargo, something you would never notice. Around 248, the fire department shows up. A minute later, the first officers, Andrew Dotis and Tyler Hawes, both arrive. Around that same time, Barricott, who is driving up 25th, likely they believe on his way to the street fair, drives by. And over the next few minutes, he circles around before finally settling in a parking lot. Three o'clock, the police backup for this crash, this non-incident, arrives. Officers Zach Robinson and Jake Willine. At 3.03, one of the cars involved in the fender bender pulls off the road and into a parking lot right next to Barricott's car. Just needed somewhere they can look at the damage. And three officers start walking over with them without any reason to think they were in danger. And that is when Barakat, they say, opened fire from inside his car. And as verified by listening to the, uh, the audio, it is, he believed it to be, and reasonably so, automatic fire. It is rapid, rat tat 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 all made possible, all made possible because of what is known as a binary trigger. Officer Robinson at this time still on the road, helping with traffic as fire crews were preparing to leave over the next two minutes. He then exchanges gunfire with the gunman horribly outgunned. Yeah, Barricott then jumps out of his car. He hides behind the passenger side of his car where he continues firing with this practically automatic weapon. Hearing the gunfire, the girl involved in the fender bender, Kaylee Coswick, runs for cover, trying to find a, a, a tree. Barricott turns to shoot her and does, but that turn gives Robinson a slightly better angle. He's standing up, he sees what's happened. He knows he's got officers down. He knows he's got the civilian down. He knows he's got other civilians just off the side. And he tells himself, just squeeze. Careful, careful, squeeze. And he does. He hits the long rifle and incapacitates it. Such presence. He also hits Barakat with that gunfire. But Barakat, while down, grabs another gun, one of many he had. Officer Robinson moves in, yelling 16 times for Barakat to drop his weapon, but he does not. He then shoots and cuffs Barakat at 3.06, about 20 minutes after the initial fender bender. Today's press conference revealed not only the entire timeline of how everything transpired, but we also learned a little bit more about what the gunman had in his possession. Valley News Team Zoe Jones joins us now live in studio, continuing our team coverage with a look at his arsenal. Zoe. That's right, Justin and Stacy. Today, for the first time, we finally got to put the face to the man behind July 14th's vicious attack. This is 37-year-old Mohammed Barakat. In the press conference on Wednesday, this photo was released showing what they found inside of his car, multiple guns, vest, knives, and 1,800 live rounds of ammunition. At today's press conference, new details were announced and new photos about what else they found, including three containers filled with gas and two propane tanks filled with homemade explosives, as well as a homemade grenade. Now, based off of Barakat's search history, Attorney General Drew Wrigley said that they have reason to believe he was on his way to the downtown street fair that afternoon. Fargo Police Chief David Zabolski said that it was clear that Barakat had malicious motives for that day. Knowing a little more about this now and listening to the Attorney General, it was clear that this individual was a calculated, insidious, murderous individual, dead set on hurting, killing as many people as possible. Later tonight on Valley News Live at 6, we will share details behind why Attorney General Drew Wrigley believes he was on his way to the downtown street fair and what they believe was planned to take place. Justin, Stacy. 
All right, thank you, Zoe. Zoe showing us there what was in the gunman's vehicle. A bomb sniffing dog alerted to that vehicle, also to the apartment. The Barracott's apartment about a mile south of the shooting scene was searched deep into the night last Friday, the same day as the shooting. Residents in the whole area were evacuated. There's still a lot, though, we don't know about the suspect. Attorney General Wrigley saying anyone who may have information about Mohammed Barakat is encouraged to contact the North Dakota Bureau of Criminal Investigation. Their number on your screen is 701-328-5500.